Postmortem Photography Today on Echoes Through Time Channel, postmortem photography, a practice that may seem macabre to some, but one with a deep and rich history. Join us on this journey through time to discover how this unique form of art emerged and why it was so important to so many cultures around the world. To understand postmortem photography, we must first go back to the beginnings of photography itself. In 1839, Louis Daguerre introduced the daguerreotype to the world, a revolutionary method that allowed many people to have a portrait for the first time. Before this, only the wealthy could afford to commission a painted portrait. With the daguerreotype, the middle class found an accessible way to immortalize their loved ones. In an era where death was an omnipresent reality, especially with high infant mortality rates and diseases ravaging the population, postmortem photography offered a last chance to capture the image of a loved one. These portraits were often the only photographs ever taken of the deceased. During the Victorian era, postmortem photography became a common and socially accepted practice. Queen Victoria, known for her long mourning period after the death of her husband, Prince Albert, influenced attitudes toward mourning and memory. Victorian families commissioned these photographs to preserve the image of their deceased children, parents, and friends, and these images were often placed in family albums alongside photos of the living. A common pose in these photographs was known as the last sleep, where the deceased was arranged as if they were sleeping. In some cases, the deceased were photographed sitting, simulating being alive, in an attempt to maintain their social presence. The long exposure required by early cameras made still subjects ideal for photography. In the case of young children, a technique called hidden mother photography was used, where the mother would hide behind a curtain or in the frame to hold the child and keep them still. Additionally, some photographs, especially tintypes and amber types, had a rosy tint added to the cheeks of the deceased to give them a more lifelike appearance. In Europe, it was common to photograph the deceased in their coffins, surrounded by family and friends in an act of farewell and remembrance. As technology advanced and cameras became more accessible, the practice of postmortem photography began to decline. By the early 20th century, the practice became more private and photographs of the deceased became family mementos rather than social portraits. However, postmortem photography did not disappear completely. In places like Iceland, this practice persisted until the mid-20th century, and today, it still exists in specific contexts, such as police and pathological work, and in contemporary artistic photography. Attitudes toward death and postmortem photography vary widely between cultures. In the United States, the practice became increasingly private as society changed. In contrast, in India, Postmortem photography remains a common practice, especially in sacred places like Varanasi, where it is believed that the cremation of a loved one can liberate their soul. In the United Kingdom, postmortem photography was especially popular during the Victorian era, but like in other parts of the world, it became less common as cultural attitudes toward death and mourning changed. Postmortem photography is a testament to how people face loss and memory. Through these images, we can glimpse a moment in time, an eternal connection between the living and the dead. Although practices and attitudes change, the human need to remember and honor those who have passed remains constant. In addition to its historical importance, postmortem photography also played a crucial role in the development of photography as an art form. Photographers of the Victorian era not only captured images of the deceased, but also experimented with lighting and composition techniques that would influence artistic photography for decades. Postmortem photography also stands out for its ability to offer an intimate glimpse into the customs and beliefs of the time. The poses, clothing, and accessories used in these photographs reveal much about how different cultures approach the topic of death and mourning. Today, the practice of postmortem photography has evolved and adapted to modern times. Although it is less common in everyday life, it remains a valuable tool in fields such as criminology and forensic pathology, 
where images of the deceased can provide crucial clues to solving cases. Additionally, some contemporary artists have revived this tradition, creating works that explore the relationship between life, death, and memory in new and innovative ways. A notable example of this is the work of the organization Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, which offers photography services to parents who have lost their newborn babies, helping them preserve a tangible memory of their brief time together. As we continue to explore the history of post-mortem photography, it is important to remember that these images are not just historical documents, but also powerful representations of the love and respect people feel for their loved ones. In each photograph, we can see the desire to keep the memory of those who have passed alive, and that is a sentiment that transcends time and cultures. In museums and photography collections around the world, such as the Reykjavik Museum of Photography and the National Museum of Iceland, these valuable images are preserved and displayed. These institutions not only preserve the photographs, but also help us better understand the cultural practices and values of past societies. Additionally, these museums offer a window into the evolution of photographic technology and its applications over time. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of post-mortem photography. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating content about history and culture.